<clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now this Bible that I hold, the King James Bible, has the words of Christ in red. And throughout the Gospels, throughout the Bible, where Jesus Christ has said something, it is written in the letters of red writing. And in all the colors that man has chosen for Christ to speak, he has chosen red. Red is the color of blood. The blood is what will save a man's soul from his sins. And when I read to you John 3.16, as a week after week after week, I begin with John 3.16. It called to my attention recently that John 3.16 are the words that are spoken by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself, who is God. And God is Jesus Christ here in Daytona Beach. I got to declare that Jesus is God. God himself writes and spoke to Nicodemus that for God, God speaking himself, so loved the world. And that love is past tense. When John 3.16, love is L-O-V-E-D. That's past tense. And there is people, there are religions out there that say, smile, Jesus loves you. Smile, God loves you. And I tell you, according to the Bible, Lord forbid if religions will not open the Bible and tell you what God has said. The Bible says, for God so loved, past tense, the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John the Baptist goes further to say in the chapter, He that has the Son, capital S, has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. In verse 16, it is the gift of God. God himself sacrificing charity moved to the world. That gave, that ain't the answer. That ain't the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. The Son of God, the blessed of God, born of a woman. 100% man, 100% God. That Jesus Christ, who is God and of God, has given himself a love that has focused upon Calvary, which is the one-third part of the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ had suffered and died according to the scriptures on Calvary. That's God giving his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that went from Bethlehem to Calvary and suffered and died according to the scriptures. And yet God's love for the world is past tense. And yet the love of God, the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ is present at this hour. Now it may not be when you die. It may not be when, if the point, the rapture were to happen. Because once you die, once the rapture happens, those who do not have the Son will not have his everlasting life. Hey, how are you, Jay? You guys. So. The gospel, the first part that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scripture. Now you say, what is Jesus Christ versus religion? Religion does nothing by the scriptures. Religion will rewrite the scripture. The religion will give you something artificial to the scripture. The, the religion will give you another testament of Jesus Christ. 
A religion will give you a missile. The religion will give you a Koran. The religion will give you a watchtower, but religion will never give you a King James Bible and stick to the teachings and the readings thereof. Now, you may be able to call the 1-800 number and get a King James Bible, but do they believe and honor the King James Bible as the Word of God? It was for what written in the Old Testament about the coming about the suffering, about the death, about the burial, and the resurrection of the Messiah called Jesus Christ. He came unto his own, his own received him not. And the second of two or three parts of the gospel is Jesus Christ was buried, as you would do with any dead body. Within time, According to the scriptures that Martha said, said, Lord, he's been in the ground four days. He stinketh. Jesus Christ, after he died, they buried him in a tomb. And they sealed that tomb. Because they knew what Jesus preached. They knew that Jesus said, I'm not staying. And they say, well, maybe his disciples will come and steal the body. That's not according to the scriptures. That's according to traditions taught by church fathers and church rabbis. That's a tradition. That's not scripture. So even in the death of Jesus, they, afraid, they, they were afraid of his body in the tomb. <laughs> they even put soldiers... They put soldiers at that tomb and sealed that tomb. But the tomb that I am talking about is not the unknown soldier. It's the tomb of Jesus Christ. That is two or three parts of the scripture of a thing to call the gospel. Now you say, preacher, why are you doing what you're doing every week? The Bible says, going all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel, two of three things. He died according to the scriptures. He was buried in the third part of the scriptures. Which makes a Christian a Christian. Three days and three nights he arose from that grave. And an angel proclaimed that he is not here. He is risen. Now my friend. No church father has ever come out of that grave alive. No rabbi has ever come out of the grave alive. No preacher has ever walked out of that tomb alive as of today. And yet but one man of all recorded man history back to Adam, one man died according to the scriptures. One man was buried and one man came out of that tomb and never went back to that tomb again. There was a young, young man in the Bible. He died and Elijah rose him from the dead, but he went back to the grave. Lazarus died, came hopping and floating out of that grave, and yet he went back to the grave. A child laid in, the, in a coffin in the beer, the Bible says, and Jesus touched it, and he came to life, and yet he will die, he died again. And when we look at Jesus Christ, yes, he died. But he's not where he is. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. You can never find a bone of Jesus. Now you got a bone of Muhammad, you got a bone and fatness of, of Buddha, you got all the skeleton remains of every pope, you got the place and the bodies of, of departed of preachers and rabbis, but you cannot find a single piece of Jesus Christ today. You may find his shroud, you may find a piece of his cross, you may find a, a where he slept, you may find his, his bronze baby shoe, but you will not find Jesus. Because he is resurrected from the grave three days and three nights according to the scriptures. 
You say, what difference a Christian? A Christian serves and puts his faith and trust in a man that's not in a grave no longer. The Bible records in the book of Hebrews, he died once, and he died once for all, and never going to die again. Ever, ever. Now, I hate to pick on religion, but I'm here preaching the gospel, and I hear it need to, because you may say, well, I'm Catholic, and I'm okay, I'm a Jehovah Witness, I'm okay, I'm a Baptist, I'm okay, I'm here to say, if you die as a Baptist, if you die as an atheist, if you die as an agnostic, if you die as a, a Catholic, if you die unsaved, you are not okay, you are going into a place called hell, and hell is full of religion. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. Now the Bible will say, Jesus speaking, red, red letter in my Bible, red letter in your Bible, the words in Christ are read. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And there will be religions out there that will say, do this, and thou shalt be good. And the Bible says, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. So where religion says do something, and the Bible says you can't, and Jesus says I'm the way, there's a conflict of interest amongst the scriptures and what you believe and what Jesus Christ has said. Now religion will say one thing and the Bible will say the other. Now the problem is the Bible records that God holds the word of God at a great focal point. That Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And there are others that said, well, our church will stand forever. The gates of hell will not ever, ever break our mother church. And I tell you, when you look upon the rock, you don't realize that my rock is Jesus Christ. The solid rock, a foundation of a man to be saved and get into heaven is the one that said, I am the Father, I am the Son, and I am the Holy Spirit, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh out to the Father but by me. That's the rock. No church building, no church can ever say that they are the way. And be honest without lying. Look around, people. If it's a church that can save your soul, how many religious churches are out there? If it's a church that can save and put you into heaven, this church says you can't do this, and if you do this, you can go to another church that will accept what you do that the other church does not accept. And then when you do something in that church that they don't like, you can go to another church that likes what they don't like, and you can play the whole church monopoly game. And then you cannot go past go and collect $200 as you journey into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And there's no card to get out of that by religion. And that is the reason why that Jesus said, I am the way. If your soul is based on anything but Jesus Christ, you are not safe when you die. And once you die, you cannot come back and undo what you didn't do to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 
There are billions of billions of millions of people in hell today that thought they were right with God and were not. And if they could, when their pastor, their priest, their rabbi entered into hell with them, they would kick their butt for all eternity for lying to them, John 8:44. And marvel not that the Bible says that Paul says that there's another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. And the fact is that Paul also preaches to the Corinthian church that there are ministers of Satan preaching. And you're going to say, no very same church I'm putting my soul in. Why not... Abandon the idea that church is safe, church will get you into heaven, and put your faith and trust upon the rock of the church, Jesus Christ. There's no other, not, there are other rocks, but there is no other rock but Jesus. Men have other rocks. And when the storms come, they find out that their rock was built upon sand. And when death comes, when they enter into the eternal life, and the storms of hell has destroyed all. Look how faithful I've been going to my church. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I was a Sunday school teacher in my church. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Without Jesus Christ, you will go into hell. And it is possible for you to go to church and go to hell. Because the only way out of hell is to believe on Jesus Christ. And all churches do not have Jesus when the Bible says there's another Jesus. Now the Bible also says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Again, that's what we're doing. We are pre preaching the death, burial, resurrection. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now Paul has said there's another gospel out there. What could be another gospel? Do you dare say what another gospel is style? Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. Another gospel would be have a new platform here, sit down, and say, if you got watchtowers, that will so if you are part of the 144,000 Jewish people of the Gentile, you will be saved. If you gather food and all that, you will survive the tribulation period, and you will be saved. That's another gospel. And I'm here to tell you, if you're to believe on the Jesus Christ, and you're to be saved upon the rock of Jesus Christ, and you're to put your faith upon the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, you will not have to worry about the tribulation period. God the Father will call you out. And if you are here during the tribulation period, and the rapture happens, you're still here, you got to worry. Because you didn't make it. That's another gospel. That will not get you saved. That will not get you into heaven. And then you may say, well, give me another gospel. E minus hocus pocus, this piece of bread is the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. It's called the Mass. Because Mass is a people. The Bible says about the Mass... Many will go into the broad way which leads to destruction. That's the Mass. I grew up with the Mass. I took part in the Mass. And the Mass cannot ever, ever save your soul because the Bible says if a man partakes of eating in the blood, he's abominable in the eyes of God. And you will believe that that body is literally and complete physical body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So Jesus Christ, to defy the scriptures, will leave the Father's throne and come down and show up in the plate and end up in your mouth. That's what you believe in a nutshell. You are trusting in 
eating a Jewish body. That is what the Mass is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when he said in John chapter 6 to partake of my flesh and my blood, he says within the same chapter that is spiritual, it was never to be physical. He says flesh, flesh and blood. When he resurrects from the grave, he says the body does not have flesh and blood. And yet you defy the scriptures and say flesh and blood was able to save your soul. That sacrifice was done with and finished on Calvary. And not once did the disciples gather around the cross with their forks and spoons and their knives to start dining on Jesus. Now in fact, the Bible records that one disciple was there and it was not Peter. Imagine that that was so important, the Pope missed the first meeting. Again, you just follow with the scriptures and mess up the scriptures. You've got lie after lie after lie. But whereas, if you were to put your faith and trust in Jesus, He is the way. He is the truth. If you were to put your faith in another religion that boasts about being baptized, alright? The question of baptism as salvation, that's a big question. Let's break it down. Number one question about baptism for, for salvation, salt or fresh water? Which water will save your soul? Some are baptized in spring water, some are baptized in the ocean. What will save you? Is it well water or is it city water? I mean, maybe some people don't believe fluoride in your baptism can save you. I don't know. How about resting upon the rock? The rock of God, Jesus Christ. Why not settle upon the gospel that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the scriptures and nobody and nothing else died on that cross for sinners. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Lamb. Singular. And nothing and nobody and not anything else but the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Why not your faith and trust today in the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, once for all? And you may trust your own feelings, but God has never consulted you on your feelings. And what you feel is not what the person next to you feels. So what is the standard? You ever considered this? People come here to buy produce and fruit and stuff. They don't want to hear your fucking mouth. Go in all the world, preach the gospel. God bless you, brother. They don't After with a mouth like that. You fuck it up for a lot of people. With a mouth like that. Hey. I'm not cussing at you. I'm just enhancing my sense. I have the public right under the Constitution of America to be here just as much as they do, sir. I don't want to hear your fucking mouth. I don't want to hear their radios when they play down my street. I don't want to hear the racetrack. I don't want to hear the music over here. So as much as I don't want to hear me, I don't want to hear that. So there you go. I don't appreciate your mouth in front of my family like that. Boy, how irritating when people get when they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. How irritated at the word of God. That's another reason why I know the Bible and God is true, because you don't want it. The Bible says, marvel not 
if the world hates you, and somebody will come up and say, well, God loves everybody, lie. Everybody loves God, lie. And yet the gospel, Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Now what you are believing to get to heaven, is it in the Bible according to the scriptures approved by God? What you believe that will get you to heaven, is it signed, sealed, and delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ, or is it of man? It's a big difference. It's a big question. Because if your salvation rests in a man, a man, you will burn in hell for all eternity. Now, if your salvation rests upon the man, Christ Jesus, of God, is God, you're safe, you're going to heaven. Now, it rests upon the man, or a man. The man, Christ Jesus, will get you to heaven. But a man's religion will get you into hell. No man has a gospel according to the scriptures, and yet the scriptures speak about their religion. Again, the words of Jesus Christ, I am the way, the way, not a way, the way. God sets off one standard of salvation. It's the way, no other way. That's God. That's not me. I'm preaching from the King James Bible. Man's way. Add an ism to it. What's an ism? Baptism. Scholarshipism. Socialism. Capitalism. Catholicism. Baptism. And ism will not save your soul. A theology will not save your soul. That is a rock. That is a way. But it's not the rock. It's not the way. And if you are relying on A, A will not save you. And if your hope and your faith is based upon the, the will save you. The Son of God. Paul warns us there are other Jesuses. And if you want to see an other Jesus, look at the yellow pages of the phone book titled Churches, and you will see other Jesuses. Look in the school directory on the yellow pages and you will see other Jesuses. And many of those Jesuses will give you a piece of paper that you can hang on the wall and look how great I am. And when I look at God's salvation, God's way, what well, is hung on the cross is Jesus Christ and I can sing, How Great Thou Art. That is nothing I can do. Say, preacher, what can you put on the wall to show your salvation? Absolutely nothing, because what I am saved by is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. He has already been nailed to a cross, and he'll be nailed to anything else no longer. How you doing? The Bible says wood, hay, or pay, uh, wood, hay, or stubble is going to burn. Those degrees you get are per paper, they burn. You can't burn Jesus. He already suffered once. He already died once. And he already rose from the grave once. And he's not going to do it again. You can get baptized over and over. You can do your church things over and over. You can do what religion tells you to do over and over. I do not sit here and preach to be saved. I sit here and preach because I am saved. 
and I glory about that my heart has believed on Jesus Christ and my mouth cannot shut up about the salvation. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. According to the Bible, true salvation you cannot shut up. Jeremiah said at one point in his ministry, I give up no more. He says, that man, my word burned in my mouth. I could not shut up. There are many ways. There are many paths. But there is one way. The way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Now, if he says he's the way, there's got to be other ways. Well, I'm okay with other ways. Jesus said he's the truth. So if he's the truth, there has to be a lie. Where is the lie? It's in the other ways. That's not him. And Jesus Christ said, I am the light. So there's got to be other lives that rest upon there's got to be other lives that rest upon lies, upon other ways. Jesus says there's no access to God except by Him. So there's got to be somebody else besides God that rests upon not living ever longer. That is a lie that is rest upon ways. And if you do not do the way, you do not do the truth, you do not get the light, and you do not have access to the Father. Friend, that's called religion or education. Why are children killing children? You took God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ out of the equation. And then you end up with that other math. <laughs> Your teachings don't even make sense today. You've changed history. Yet the word of God abounds. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I was telling my wife earlier. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. How many times has Daytona Beach Farmer's Market tried to stop us from preaching? How many tactics have you used to prevent me from preaching the gospel? How many people have come up to my face and thought they're going to drive me away, as happened about five minutes ago? And yet, not me, the preacher, the word of God stands about. Wouldn't it be very interesting that if the fact is, if you were to kill the preacher, let's say you came up and you hired someone to kill me. And God has intended the word of God to be here. There'll be somebody here next week. If that was God's intentions. And you would clap and say, Hallelujah, he's dead, as they did with Jesus. Now, I'm not Jesus. If you're going to bury me in the ground, I'm going to stay in the ground to the rapture. I'd be in a better place absent from the body present with the Lord. And can you imagine next Saturday, you're going about your business, and you hear, Praise the Lord! Oh, what is that? And if God wants the Word of God to bow, God wants the Word of God to be exalted, God wants the Word of God to be preached, it doesn't matter who it is, He'll find somebody who will do. You know the another thing about the love of God? I've gone for the love of God, I've gone to the gospel. The love of God is. Now you may not believe this. But the love of God is, if you were to turn around and look north, you would be held the love of God. Now everybody's going to look, we're going to see God. No, you're going to see a preacher with the King James Bible. That's the love of God. The love of God is God told that man that got saved, go, you know, to preach, to preach the gospel. And here we are. 
We preach, we've got signs, we got gospel tracts. That's the love of God. And you don't want it. And you hate it. And you got a filthy mouth to the Word of God. And you are not receiving the love of God. The love of God that God has spoken to us to say, Go and tell them about my Son, Jesus Christ. Because the radio dial ain't going to do it. The television evangelist is not going to do it. You know how many of those people are not going to be in church on Sunday morning? And those that do go to church, you know what the standard of those people are going to go to church that's not correct and it's going to have Satan in the, in the pulpit? You're going to have somebody behind a pulpit that's got sheep's clothing? You better take that Bible, you better take Jesus Christ and show the love of God by preaching to those people Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and God says to me, I say, good God, what's going to happen? Who cares what happens? Go and preach the gospel. What's going to happen, Lord? Many will go the broad way that lead us to destruction. Many of those people you preach to are going to go to hell. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, many of you, according to the scriptures, will go into hell. Besides the fact that is the love of God, he sent the preacher to you. Matthew. That it, God? Few will go the straight gate that leadeth to life. Few of you will actually believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be encouraged and will get your name led in the last book of life because someone has preached the gospel. Paul says, I planted. Apollos watered. But God gives increase. I don't know if I'm planting seeds, Mark chapter 4. I don't know if somebody planted the seed in you. There may be someone here at the farmer's market, Daytona Beach, that is hearing the gospel. And someone may be on their knees right now praying about your soul. And they probably don't have any idea what's happening right now. Oh, Lord God, my friend, my husband, my son, my daughter, my wife, my child. Lord God, will you witness to them? Will you tell them about Jesus? What we do that you hate may be the answers of a prayer of a loved one right now today. Before they start their day. They could be praying right now as you are hearing the gospel that Jesus saved and only Jesus saves. You want to hear something else the Bible says? We all have loved ones, sorry to say, even me, we have loved ones that are in hell today right now. And the Bible records in the book, the Gospel of Luke, that our loved ones, your loved ones in hell, when the Gospel is preached, they want you to listen. They want God to send somebody to their family that you may not come to hell. So there could be someone right now, the love of God, praying for you right now. And we are answering their prayers. There's a possibility that we are answering the loved one's prayers of you right now. That you will hear the gospel and that you will believe. And full assurity that someone in hell that loves you is desiring that you will listen and believe on Jesus Christ that you may not go where they're going. 
If there's ever a place that do not want a family reunion, according to the Bible, it's hell. That rich man that went to, get, that went to hell says, I've got five brothers. And I don't want to see him here. There are some of you going to go to hell to cite the prayer of a loved one. There are some of you going to go to hell and you're going to displease your loved ones because they did not want you there. The love of God that the preaching is being taught. I don't know if that's a word. Webster made up words, so did I. You have no love in you. Yes, we do. We preach the gospel that you may not know, go to hell. We preach the gospel that you may know how not to go to hell. We preach the gospel that if you do go to hell, you have heard the way not to go. We preach the gospel because God commands to preach the gospel. Now, you don't want me to break the commandments of God, do you? You would not want me to go against the word of God, would you? So I've got to preach. I want to preach. In my heart is Jesus and my mouth is overflowing with Jesus. Nothing satisfies like Jesus. Religion can't do that. And week after week, we're going to preach Jesus and we're going to preach religion. We're going to preach heaven and we're going to preach hell. We're going to preach God's way and we're going to preach your way. We're going to preach the yay and we're going to preach the nay. And if you do it God's way, you're safe. And if you don't do it God's way, you are not safe. And God's way is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved.